Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are taking a look at configuration drift. So this is when provision infrastructure has an unexpected configuration change due to team members manually adjusting configuration options, malicious actors, so maybe they are trying to cause downtime or breach data, or side effects from APIs, SDKs, or CLIs. So you've written some code that uses a CLI in a bash script, uh, and it does something you did not expect to happen. Uh, so here an example could be, imagine you have a server like a database and a junior developer turns off delete on termination for your production database. This could be a problem where let's say there's an accidental deletion of the database. Uh, this feature would protect the database from deletion, but if it's turned off, you don't have that, right? So configuration drift going unnoticed could be a loss or breach of cloud services and residing data or result in interruption of services or unexpected downtime. So there's a lot of um, uh, downsides to uh, neglecting or not noticing configuration drift. So what can we do about this? So how to detect? So there's three things, detect, um, we can fix it and then prevent it, okay? So to detect configuration drift, if you have a compliance tool, uh, it can detect misconfiguration. So AWS Config can do that. Azure Policies can do that. GCP Security Health Analytics can do that. Some of these are constrained to uh, uh, security uh, things, not just uh, configuration in general, but there are tools there uh, for uh, all the cloud service providers. There is built-in support for drift detection for AWS CloudFormation. It's called CloudFormation uh, drift detection. Uh, other providers don't necessarily have that. Um, if you're using Terraform, which is this, which is all this course is about, you have uh, the Terraform state files, which says what the state of things should be. Uh, so that's how you could detect configuration drift. Uh, how to correct configuration drift? Well, compliance tools can remediate. So again, AWS Config, you can create a custom Lambda to say, hey, when this happens, then do this. So set the configuration back into place. With Terraform, you can use the refresh and plan commands, which we'll look at in detail in this course. Um, or you could manually correct it. So if the option was changed, you could do that. Not recommended to do that. Another thing would be tearing down and setting up the infrastructure again, because that would bring it back into its original state. Uh, that could be a risky thing to do, um, uh, depending on how you have things set up, or it could be, it could be fine, right? Then there's prevention. So um, this is a, a, the important thing and kind of why we're talking about configuration drift, which is all about immutable infrastructure. So always create and dis destroy, never reuse. So that might be blue-green deployment strategies. Um, servers are never modified. They are all, they are just always deployed with a new version. Uh, the way you would do that would be baking AMI images uh, or containers via AWS Image Builder or HashiCorp Packer or a build server like GCP Cloud Run or uh, code build like AWS. Um, but the idea is that you are not modifying after they're deployed. You'd have that image already ready to go. Another thing you could use is GitOps. So uh, you would version control your IAC like within GitHub or something like that. And you would peer review every single uh, um, uh, change via a pull request to the infrastructure. So hopefully that gives you an idea of things we can uh, do to tackle configuration drift, okay?